uh, probably going to get a little bit uh, wackier as we move forward. Now, tonight, it, it, I think we're going to do uh, Eric and myself uh, for both hours. Uh, there's a lot of stuff we want to cover. I, I want to get into some debate on this division, this division of red and blue team, this division of Tea Party versus Occupy. Look, it's coming hot and heavy, and it's – it's evident, it's self-evident what direction we're going to go. All right, so if you're not in the chat room, if you are in the chat room and you're wondering what the heck I was doing on the video uh, for tonight's program, well, Eric is wondering the same thing because uh, I apparently forgot to turn my mic on, so I went ahead and deleted that. It, it was a promo video for tonight's show. Uh, obviously, it, you couldn't hear it unless you could read lips. You don't know what we're going to talk about. However, I'm going to run it down right now, a couple things that I want to talk about. Uh, Anaheim, Eric has been keeping me up to speed all day long on what's going on uh, inside Anaheim and how it's uh, on the verge of a uh, real, real riot. Um, I want to talk about the case of uh, Rodney Brichard, who is the first American uh, to be convicted or at least to be arrested with information used, uh, uh, gathered by a drone, a predator drone. This is an individual in North Dakota. North or South Dakota, I can't remember. Anyway, one of the Dakotas, Rodney Richard. The, the whole incident, first of all, if you're listening and not in the chat, get in the chat because we're going to pull topics out of there tonight as well. Wideawakenews.com, click on the second uh, tab. That'll get you into chat. But those of you who have sent me messages, sorry to jump all over the place. i got a list of things that I don't want to uh, miss tonight. For those of you who have sent me messages on the newsletter, um, we put out three. If you signed up for it in the last week, you haven't uh, received one yet. Uh, we do have our webmaster back, so we're going to be back up to speed. Eric Lovely's article uh, will be posted later on tonight, um, as well as we'll get a new uh, newsletter out uh, within the next 24 hours. Lots of information will be in there. Well, also, if you're if you're wanting to sign up for the newsletter, we will have a, a banner back up to do that as well, uh, since Bonnie is back in action. All right, get into the chat room, wideawakenews.com. We're going to start rolling here. I want to talk about Rodney Richard. Rodney Bouchard had six cows wander onto his property in the Dakotas. Six cows wander onto his property. This led to a 10-hour standoff with uh, local, in a county of 3,000 people, local SWAT teams that eventually turned into the DHS, Department of Homeland Security, Fatherland Security, uh, offering the tactical uh, unit use of a predator drone in order to spy on the Burchard family, the, the, the FBI, the uh, SWAT team, they all said that, you know, we used this drone to make sure the family was there and unarmed before they raided, uh, you know, and of course what the press wants to put out as a compound. You know, whatever the dispute is, you know, this guy broke the law, didn't break the law, he had cattle on his property, didn't want to give it back. This is an Andy Griffith moment, right? This is a Mayberry moment. You know, I, I live in this part of the country and, and I can't imagine that we have six cattle roaming onto somebody's thousand acre ranch holding these cattle hostage. And now we have the DHS providing predator drones in order to guarantee that there will be no problem serving, uh, his warrant or, or uh, facilitating uh, his arrest. Now it's ironic. He's charged with felony terrorizing. Uh, you know, we, we've fallen so far in this country. We've fallen completely off the cliff when it comes to freedom and freedom of expression. But it has nothing to do with a Democrat or Republican. And and I'm driving this point home because I, I had a conversation with a friend today about this. You know, and basically it was he heard through the grapevine that I was a liberal. And I found it interesting. I'm like, well, what's a liberal? You know, and he, somebody who's a, a pro-Obama, pro-left, pro-whatever, and, and pro-taking guns. And, and I tried to have a conversation with this guy about, look, left, right, red, blue, it, it's really way past the point of understanding that there there is a team and you are not on it. If you're playing this red and blue team garbage, then all you are is a pawn. You, you're a target. You're a victim. You're fodder. You're nothing. You're a cog. Not even a useful cog. You're about to be a run over cog. You mean nothing to these people. Obama, Romney, give me a break. There is zero difference between the two. Look, we are going to be inundated, inundated in the in the days to come. It's already happening, not the days to come now, against the 
the Tea Party taking on the Occupy movement. We must do everything we can, and, and it might be fruitless at this uh, juncture, to, uh, to have people understand, to make them understand, to, to show them that, look, this argument between the Occupy movement and the Tea Party movement is four years in the making. A lot of people, myself included, alternative media, from the very get-go said, they're going to co-opt this. They're going to turn it into a red team thing, the Tea Party uh, deal. I was there. Eric Lovely was involved in the Tea Party back in the day. I was there marching in the streets of Bozeman, Montana, walking down to the courthouse to, to uh, protest out-of-control spending by the Republican-controlled government. But it had nothing to do with it being Republican. It had everything to do with out-of-control government. Government. You buy into the red team, you buy into the blue team, you do so at your own peril, period. Plain, simple, straight to the point, straight to the point. These people are going to absolutely run roughshod over what's remaining of freedom in this country. We have a guy in the Dakotas with six cows on his property charged with uh, felony terrorizing, and they're using a multi-million dollar military-grade predator drone designed to kill, which what we've been doing for the last decade with these things, they used it in North Dakota, of all places, in order to force the department, uh, enforce the Department of Homeland Security's Nazi-style tactics in spying on individuals, and a court upheld it today. Do you think we're in peril? Do you think that the big threat of the day is, uh, is Barack Obama going to take your guns? Forget about it. This is an argument that's being ginned up so that you will look at the guy across the aisle and say it's that SOB's fault that my country's falling apart. And in a way, that's right, but it's both of ours' fault. It's the so-called left, so-called right, so-called red and blue. We need to understand that we are the team. We are on a team together versus this very small minority that is going to run this country and this planet completely off the cliff if we continue to battle amongst ourselves while they steal every bit of freedom that we have and the little bit we have remaining left. This is a message that cannot be said enough. It cannot be said loud enough. If we don't have people understand this, we've lost from the get-go. You better batten down the hatches and just wait to defend yourself. This is what it will ultimately come to if we let this garbage continue, if we let this false paradigm continue, if we pretend that there is an enemy that lives across the street because he voted Democrat or Republican or he thinks he's going to go out this time and vote the other way and affect any difference whatsoever. It is absolutely a waste of your time. It is fruitless. It will not bear any kind of a positive outcome for you to think that jumping on board the red or blue team or jumping on board the Glenn Beck uh, Tea Party movement or the Nancy Pelosi Occupy movement and, and buying into the hype that these are Republican and Democrat uh, movements in this country. If you buy into this, you've lost. You've already lost. You might as well pack it up and leave. Because you're only going to be frustrated and you're only going to watch the dismantling of what is left of liberty and freedom inside this country. Period. There's no, there's no other way to describe it. There's no other outcome that could possibly happen. We're not going to have a gentle sweep to the left or a gentle sweep to the right. We're not going to inch back towards a republic. We're not going to inch back towards free market capitalism. We are going to see the haves continue to amass everything at the expense of those Everybody else, the have-nots. It's not coincidence. It's not a coincidence that our debt is blowing up out of control. It's not a coincidence that housing is falling through the floor. It's not a coincidence that incomes are falling through the floor. It's not a coincidence that with $8 trillion spent inside of four years, we see number of support come out in August of 2012 showing uh, the ADP created not even enough jobs, private sector, to keep up with population growth. This is not an accident. It is not happenstance. This is a fact of the implosion that has been designed and being implemented into this country and onto the world. We need to understand there is no red, blue, dim, Republican, conservative, liberal. That's garbage. Throw those monikers out the door. Throw those chains out the door. Wake up. It's okay for you to have a different opinion than the guy across the street. It's okay for you to have your own ideology, your own beliefs, your own religious beliefs, your own political beliefs. That's fine. Understand, anything that is meant to divide and conquer is meant for a reason, to keep you dumbed down and ignorant of what's happening to you at this very moment. All right, let's bring Eric Lovely on. Eric, my friend, welcome to the program. Do you disagree with anything I said? 
Well, you know, if I unmute myself, uh, perhaps I could say, no, no, I really don't disagree with you. Uh, you know, you got this guy going on with, with, with the cows, and, and that isn't on one of the only dastardly things. As you go out to West Virginia, or not West Virginia, but the western side of the nation in the California, we're not even going to Anaheim. Uh, I think the city starts with an F. But you have your first arrest and, and, and coming up very shortly in a couple of weeks, attempted prosecution on a felony charge of gathering rainwater. Yes, that's right. You have the very first arrest and attempted prosecution underway over rainwater. Awesome. Just awesome. And we're going to bicker about, uh, you know, the, the latest words that Obama said or Romney said. Well, the, you know, the house is burning, right? The house is burning and, and we're not, uh, we're not looking at the fire. We're looking at, uh, we're looking outside the window to see who's coming down the street. It's, it's crazy. It's insanity. It, you know, it, 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 I, I just can't believe the, the, the entire insanity that's going on from the, the shooting and whatnot in, in Colorado and the entire, I mean, I don't think a fiction novel writer, whichever one you want, pick one. I don't think that the Hollywood writers could have come up with that entire story. I, I it's just the whole idea behind the, the this guy being under psychological evaluation from uh, all of these individuals, uh, at, at, from the Air Force to a guy who now is is going to go away with a felony, I guess, to prison because. He's a cattle rustler, yeah. and and then you you go all the way over to look at, you know, people were shocked today, and they were sending me the you know all of this news media, and they were so shocked, and they were they were appalled, and they were taken back that first uh, the Olympic gold medals aren't actually gold, and that they didn't know that for every goal every medal that you win at the Olympics, they're actually taxed on that medal as if it was income. So, I mean, people continue, the people, the people surprise me that they continue to be surprised by this information that's yeah. coming out. I ran into that exact same thing today, where that was the topic of conversation. The gold medal scandal was a topic of, or, you know, the tax on the gold medal or silver medal, bronze medal, whatever the case was, uh, that scandal. This is going to be the big news. We have to have legislation, man. We've got to have legislation now to free our athletes from this burden. <laughs> what a joke! I mean, yeah. you know. Well, you know, and this this whole idea about this 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 cow situation. Yeah. You know, I I don't know why this guy didn't want to give back the cows. I don't know who owned the cows. I don't. I, but to me, it, it it seems it just seems insanity to me how today I, I I've seen different numbers. Okay, I've seen different numbers. But to get these six cows, six cows. And to serve this warrant cost them like seven million dollars. Yeah. Well, we see this time after time, and it's all about uh, providing cover for the Department of Homeland Security, providing uh, this backdrop of uh, functionality, right, for the Joint Terror Task Force. We see this what uh, what we had the uh, the the bridge bombers, these idiots that they lined up and convinced. Uh, that uh, to be involved in this plot to blow up a bridge, where they Baltimore, the Baltimore Eight, or whatever they were, where you had the Department of Homeland Security, the FBI, and all these other different uh, agencies coming together and holding hands and spending millions of dollars to uh, to arrest a half a dozen idiots who together, you know, probably couldn't, uh, you know, get a VCR working. Do they still use well, VCRs? Well, couldn't get a DVD player working. That, 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 that's really hilarious because if you look at some of the testimony when it came out that this 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 FBI informant, okay, he went through hours and hours and hours of training yes. the individual. Yes, and he was a criminal. Yeah, because if, if, if memory because serves, he the bomb correctly. <laughs> yeah, well, and if memory serves, the informant, the ones that uh, the one that lured these guys into the plot, uh, was up on charges and faced deportation and and. You know, he was a, a convicted criminal uh, that got a, a pass because he, you know, made uh, the uh, Joint Terrorism Task Force relevant. Yeah, and you know what? They don't even tell you what it's for, but they did in the beginning. You know, they talked about the informant and how he did his duty, and that's why they were going to excuse seven felony charges. Now, no one's ever told us what those seven felony charges was, but 
you know, if you go out and find some hapless morons dumber than you and talk them into some really dumb stuff and, 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 and attempt to tell them that you're going to change the world and I'm going to pay you a whole bunch of money for doing this, that you can get out of whatever crime it was that you did. Yeah. It, it, it really, truly is ridiculous. The communities in America, the individual people in America, it, it really, they, they baffle me. You have this huge backlash now also that happened today. The, these people who are backlashing against Max Kaiser of all people. And, and what Max Kaiser said that started this, this kind of backlash towards him is that the Second Amendment struggle in America was a joke. And he went on to say the reason why it was a joke is because you would have done something with those guns already if you really believed in it. And you know what? I support him for saying that because it, it really is the reality. You know, we, we have gone so far down the hole. We, we have blown by the reasons that our forefathers chose to revolt. We're, we're, you know, we can't even... The, they would look at us and, and they would just – I think they would truly be disgusted by what we're allowing to well, happen. Well, it's, it's what I said the other night You know, it, when we were talking about um, uh, the senator who's putting this rider on the cybersecurity bill, right, that, he, that he's going to implement some kind of gun control and he's going to attach it to the cybersecurity bill. It shows you just how far we've come that this, this, is, this probably is going to happen. And people just won't care because we've all been immersed in governed by crisis. Every single aspect of governance now is by crisis. You know, th there has to be a state. There has to be a group of states that eventually says, uh, uh, you know, we're, we've had it. We've had enough. We want out. We want to step away from this authority, and we want to uh, go back to uh, governing ourselves, self-governance. I, I, you know, that's my hope anyway, and, and I think if it does happen, it'll be out here in the West. But you know, we keep going down this road of crisis after crisis, and it doesn't matter if it has to do with financial uh, uh, financial incidents uh, or if it has to do with terror incidents. It, it, it's one crisis after another, and we write laws uh, to fix the problem after it's occurred. Then, when you look at things like this uh, pro this guy Rodney Brashot and his six cows, you know, this is the catalyst. Now, this is all it takes. Six cows in North Dakota equates to precedent for you. To have a drone 40,000 feet over air, you can't even see, that can look in, uh, look in your window, look in, watch you walk down the street, you know, potentially, uh, you know, record conversations you might be having, or, you know, in a worst case scenario, that wouldn't surprise me we get to this sooner rather than later, a uh, Hellfire missile loaded on this thing because you're a belligerent actor and you can be wiped out. It takes six cows to have precedent law, uh, established in this nation. Eric, it's gotta stop. It's got to stop. It, but, Charlie, it isn't. It isn't going to stop until physically, that you know, the whole idea of, of there being states that stand up, states aren't going to do jack, okay? The, the, the people who run the individual states, governors and, and state departments uh, for the actual state, the state congress houses, they're the same, okay? They're playing in the minor leagues, hoping that they get called up to the big leagues. That, that's what they're hoping. You know, they don't care about the people that's in the state. They want to spend enough money. They want to placate enough people. They want to get enough kickbacks and enough earmarks and all this crap and money into their state so that you will elect to pull them up from the minor league baseball team and send them on out to the big diamond where they can play in Washington, D.C. That's all they care about. It's that's exactly right. That's exactly right. You have, I do believe, Eric, I don't, I don't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, you know, I, all I'm saying is, is that with the, with the minute left before the break, the only way that we are physically going to have states it, that will rebel and that will say, look, we are independent countries within a union that creates a nation. The only way you're going to have that is if you have individuals within those states that finally say, look, I'm done. I've had it up to here. I'm sick of it. I don't want to hear your politician crap. I don't want to hear your mouth. You're either going to leave office or we're going to drag you out of office and we're going to take our counties back. We're going to take our state back and we're going to do it physically. No more wooden sticks with paper on it because it, it, that, that's just the way it's going to boil down to. And, and if that doesn't happen, then you're never going to see it happen until until the people stop and actually look in the mirror and say, wait a minute, my freedom and the freedom of my children is worth 
all the dying for is worth all of the oppression. It's worth everything that may happen to me. And then they go out of their house and join up with fellow like-minded people and do something about it. There is never going to be a change. All you're going to hear is a bunch of two-year-old, 40-year-olds whining and bellyaching and crying on the sidelines about blah, blah, blah. They doing this to us now. <laughs> it was good till the blah 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 and then it kind of lost me <laughs> Eric Lovely we'll be right back with uh, more of Eric Lovely and more Wide Awake News Radio in five and a half minutes hang tight guys we'll be right back I'm Charlie McGrath your host it is the second day of August 2012 big news of the day of course is the Olympics blah 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 I'm still in Eric Lovely's line and uh, whatever distraction of the day uh, is being pumped over the airways but in reality the court system has set precedent law into effect that uh, makes it completely and totally, but at least with precedent law, uh, to have a uh, drone aircraft be used in the facilitation, is that a word? Facilitating your arrest. Uh, 30,000 feet, DHS uses a drone to make sure the family's there and they're not armed. They go in and they bust this guy for a felony terrorizing act. What did he do? Was he mixing uh, ammonium nitrate and the such in his garage? Was he uh, plotting the uh, the next 9-11? Was he uh, deciding that he's had enough is enough? Well, kind of. He wanted to keep six cows that wandered onto his property. Welcome to the United States of America, where well, you don't maybe. have freedom. It doesn't exist. Argue about uh, you know gay rights, gay marriage. Argue about... You know, what's the next uh, color up to bat at the uh, at the inaugural address? Is it going to be red or blue? All you want to, and while you do, this country has uh, ceased to be a uh, freedom-loving republic and has turned into a shoddy democracy that promises nothing more than uh, misery and tyranny for those who uh, want to stick around for the show uh, and those who get out. You know, I, I actually, Eric, I actually know some people that have uh, exited the area, a couple of them, you know, some of them have been on the show, like uh, Aaron Hawken, uh, but others uh, locally that have said, I've had enough, and they've, took an off, they've taken off to uh, Costa Rica. I've talked about on the program before Iceland, you know, and, and people in the chat are, are gossiping about Iceland once in a while. Uh, the, you know, the last nation that had the courage to stand up to bank and say, guess what? Sorry, you lose. You were holding the debt. You made the bet. Goodbye. See you later. And they're, they're using their krona now, and guess what? 5% unemployment. And uh, they're moving towards a, a sustainable recovery while the rest of the world is begging the bankers to turn on the printing presses again so we can have a fantasy uh, existence. But guess what, everybody? The fantasy existence will come to an end. And when it does, it will be a reality gut check moment. All right, Eric, uh, you want to elaborate on that? I do want to get into a little bit when you're done elaborating on that, uh, on what happened in the market yesterday because it's kind of freaky. So go ahead. Well, you know, looking at I, I, looking at that particular country, I wouldn't I wouldn't say a sustainable recovery. I would say that that they ha that they actually generated a booming response. That they've come out of that hole like gangbusters. I mean, people have gone back to work. Their internal economy is is working beautifully. And they are employing more people. The shipment of goods and and resources is is actually at at its highest pace. In 50 years in that country, I would say that, that they are booming, and it is one heck of a response, and it's also a big, giant gold star for all of those of us who, like you said during the break, all of us nutcases, um, to look at and say, uh, well, you know, look at that example. <laughs> Everybody else who's screaming for government money, I want some government cheese, they are still in the situation they were in, I would go to say even a far worse situation at, than 2008. We have done nothing but decline since then. Right. There are no improvements. And if you look at every, the, the one individual who said, hey, look, Mr. Banker, pound sand, they have a booming recovery. They're excelling. There is more national pride now within that nation than, there, like I said, that there has been in 50 years People are doing the jobs that supposedly nobody wanted to do, and so on and so forth. And, and you know, this is the whole idea here is when you look at these six cattle and you look at this situation. I know we're kind of tr I'm trying to tie them all together. What you see, as including in Anaheim, which we're going to get into here in a little while, is basically a federalization of all local police. That's right. That's what you see happening. 
you see a a a a, 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 a basically tiering or what they call columning or what you call centralization of power, you have an upward column building to where all police officers are basically federal agents. That, that, that's what you see. And all they have to do is whip out their little document and say, okay, um, section 12, 13, 42, yeah, uh, rec let, let's uh, uh, re requisition a couple of drones and, uh, you know, oh, and, you know, the guy with the, the cows might have been armed. And in the future, if he is armed, I'll make sure they've got a couple of hellfires to, to blow up the buildings and whatnot on the property so that we can serve this warrant. And they'll stick it in the little email box and away it'll go and they'll get an approval and the bigwig federal agents will send their little federal minions all the equipment and dastardly pieces of uh, uh, death and destruction that they need. Uh, yeah, and I, I do want to get into that, but I want to kick that down the road just a little bit, if you don't mind. Go ahead. I want to hear about the uh, the 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 nine eleven. Well, I I know you want to do a whole intro and build up, so I, I want to get into the market. <laughs> blah blah blah. <laughs> I, I don't want to do a big intro and into this deal, I, but I I have a little bit of a clip I want to play because it's been it's been brought up on the program over the last couple of days about you know are we going to see a, a false flag? Are we going to see uh, some kind of event occur out of the Olympics? Um, what are we going to see uh, on the financial markets? And and I found this headline thanks to the good folks over at uh, Before It's News uh, dot com. Uh, today, and this is referring to yesterday, it came out yesterday. Today's stock market activity uh, is exactly what happened days before 9/11. I'm going to read a little bit this, of this to you, and then uh, we'll listen to some of this video, these comparison. Uh, today's stock exchange, again, this is yesterday. Today's stock exchange trading uh, went off the charts with a 2,000 percent increase instantly. This is exactly what happened two days before 9/11. It's happening again. Stock markets were already on the edge because of financial crisis in Greece. That's right. Greece is still, uh, you know, Greece. And, and Ms. Pa Ms. Patriot uh, in the chat room said it's hard to compare a country of 300 million to 300,000. And yes, you were right. I mean, our problems are far deeper. Uh, but primarily, you, you can you can compare uh, structure of government, representative government. You can compare what happens when a government says, all right. We are working on behalf of our constituents, our people, and we're going to do things like hire, what, private detectives to go after the bankers who brought us to this position, and we're going to pass law and legislation that is on uh, behalf of the people, not the banks. So it really doesn't matter if it's 300, 3,000, uh, 300,000, 3 million. If you have self-governance, you will uh, inevitably uh, do what is uh, right for the people and not for the very, very elite few. So I, I understand the argument of a very small nation like uh, Iceland not being used as a good example, but I say it's the perfect example. It's a microcosm of representative government. It's a microcosm of what happens when government works for people rather than for banking institutions. Anyway, back to the story. The stock market was already on the edge because of the financial crisis in Greece. Images of mobs demonstrating in Athens were fueling uh, an underlying panic. There's growing fear that a financial collapse in Greece could trigger a wave of financial trouble across the world, uh, blah, 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 as Eric Lovely would say. Early in the morning, st some stocks swung wildly on unusually high trading volume. This was the big story yesterday, this uh, big, massive amount of trading that occurred uh, in instantaneous, a bit like a big, fat finger day. Here are some of the stocks that had astronomical activity at 10 a.m. this morning for no reason. I don't know what happened, or I don't know what the abbreviations stand for, but I do know that the top of the list is the U.S. government. This is the same group that increased 800% one day before 9-11 and made billions off of 9-11. And this, uh, this, this uh, indice that, w that increased 800% two days before 9-11 increased 1,973% yesterday. So, uh, and, and then there's a whole list. I'll, drop, I'll go ahead and drop this uh, into the chat. But there's a whole list of uh, other uh, uh, ind indicators and equity funds and that kind of thing that had this wild 1,000, 2,000 point move uh, or increase in volume. And I want to play a little bit of this clip. Eric, did, did you want to chime in before I play this clip? Because it's a couple minutes long. Roll it. All right, man. So let's play this clip. It's, it's comparisons. It's things that happened pre-9-11 and how it's compared to now. So listen up. Here we go. I've got to be honest with you. When the September 11th situation happened, 
I didn't know that. The, <laughs> and I must say, and I want to, and I want to. Let me stop here. This guy speaking right now is Carlton Brown. He's a commodities trader, and he's giving a testimony, uh, or at least he's giving, uh, he's making a video on what happened on pre nine eleven. Here we go. I want to say this because it's. I want to take it lightly. It's not a light situation. It's a, a devastating act. Uh, it was really a bad thing. It was one of the worst things I've seen in my lifetime, you know. But I will tell you, and every trader will tell you, who was not in that building and who was buying gold and who owned gold and silver, that when it happened, the first thing you thought about was, well, how much is gold up? The first thing that came to mind was, my God, gold must be exploding. Fortunately for us, all our clients were in gold. So when it went up, they all doubled their money. Everybody doubled their money. It was a blessing in disguise. Devastating. Crushing. Heart shattering. But on a financial sense, for the, my clients that were in the market, they all made money. Now, I wasn't looking for this type of help. But it happened. When the U.S. bombed Iraq uh, back in 1991, the price of oil went from $13 to $40 a barrel, for Christ's sake. Now, we couldn't wait for the bomb to start raining down on Saddam Hussein. We were all excited. We wanted Saddam to really create problems. Do whatever you have to do. Set fire to some more oil wells because the price is going to go higher. Every broker was chanting that. There was not a broker that I know of that wasn't excited about that. This was a disaster. This was something that was, you know, catastrophe happening, bombing, wars. In devastation, there is opportunity. 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 A put option is a bet that a stock price is going to fall. If one were to put a single put option contract on American Airlines at $30 a share and the stock fell to $18, one could purchase 100 shares at $18 and immediately sell them for $30, netting a profit of $12 a share. This is exactly what happened on a far larger scale with many companies around the world on 9-11. The levels of options purchased the week of 9-11 were more than six times higher than normal. A former member of the German parliament, then responsible for oversight of the German secret service, estimated that profits by insider traders were $15 billion. Wall Street analyst Phil Erlinger was the first to spot the suspicious trades. What I see is prior knowledge. You can call it conspiracy. It's my opinion that somebody knew ahead of time that 9-11 was going to happen and they made bets to take advantage of it. And these bets weren't just normal run-of-the-day bets. They were far in excess of, of what we would call normal activity. Put options set to expire on September 30th, 2001 were bought on August 6, 2001 or earlier at the Chicago Board Options Exchange. These put options were basically a bet that the stock would plummet. When it did, the people who purchased those put options made a lot of money. Thousands of put stock options were bought on United and American Airlines immediately prior to September 11, 2001. On average, during the first weeks of September 2001, 27 put options were bought each day on Morgan Stanley, one of the World Trade Center's largest occupants. The total of its put options for the three days prior to the attacks was 2,157. Merrill Lynch, also in the WTC, saw 12,215 put stock options. That is 12 times its normal level. Between September 6th and 7th, Chicago Board Options Exchange saw 4,744 put option contracts with United Airlines and only 396 call options. On September 10th, put options for American Airlines totaled 4,516 versus 748 call options. In addition, these trades were not only occurring in our country, 
but around the world. There is no chance that all or even most of the trades were placed by Osama bin Laden or Al-Qaeda. According to Fox News, CNN, and the BBC, insider trading reports were found in the USA, Germany, Britain, France, Canada, Japan, Monte Carlo, Switzerland, Hong Kong, Italy, Spain, Belgium, Luxembourg, and Singapore. The director of the CIA headed a firm that bought some of these put stock options. Until 1998, Buzzy Krongard headed United Airlines stock. Mr. Krongard was head of Bankers Trust until he resigned and was promoted to CIA executive director by President Bush in March 2001. Buzzy Krongard purchased this stock and our government did nothing about it. Deutsche Bank is also one of the four banks most used by the Bin Laden family. Additionally, two and a half million dollars in put options on United and American Airlines went unclaimed. The German Central Bank President, Ernst Weltech, had a study conducted by his bank. It indicated, quote, there are ever clearer signs that there were activities on international financial markets that must have been carried out with the necessary expert knowledge in industries such as gold, oil, airlines, and insurance companies. There was a lot of money to be made from the events of September 11th. And indeed, uh, many people in our uh, own government called the events of September 11th an opportunity. An opportunity. All right, let, let me cut it off there because we're about two minutes before the break uh, in getting into the second hour. But I, I wanted to play that because, you know, it, it truly shows how relevant when we see these fat finger events, when we see these wild trades, uh, you know, the, the, these these are, you know, when, when Dex was on here all the time, and for those of you wondering, he's going to get back on here real soon. Uh, you know, he, he would talk about these same type of events, you know, pre-9-11 and see all this uh, – activity to put these put options on these airlines where you know 20 uh, on uh, uh lehman brothers merrill lynch where it was 27 a day average and, and then three days prior it was four thousand put options on these this isn't coincidence so when we see these kind of fat finger events you know we'll we'll hear the market uh, commentator shrug it off as uh you know hey it's just a glitch it's a it's an algorithm that went awry but it isn't they, they they always uh, tend to uh, uh, preempt. Uh, they uh, are able to predict what's going to come by the actions in the market. And when we see this uh, activity yesterday with 1,900 percent uh, swings uh, in these some of these indices, then we need to understand that potentially something big is coming down the road. Eric, I, I'm sure you're familiar with all these uh, vast amount of fortunes that were made, uh, billions and billions of dollars made in just a few days of knowing what was coming before 9-11? Well, you know, the thing that I also heard in the video is that they tied it to uh, al-Qaeda making some of the trades and options, but the people who became vastly wealthy were actually uh, higher officials within our own government, corporate officials. I mean, the, the ridiculous amount of money, and then you can couple that on top of, you know, if people don't think this is going on if you're trying to build a prior knowledge case. You have the individual who purchases the World Trade Center and then basically executes one of the largest insurance claims, you know, months before the event ever, you know, the, the, uh, it was like less than less than 40 days before the event took place and so on and so forth. You know, it, it to me, I think that I'm glad that people are continuing to do this type of education. I'm glad that people are attempting to get that in information out to others to to wake as many people up. But you know, th this is this that's how they buy you off. You know, if you're on the fence or you know you're you're not real sure, what am I going to get out of it? That's everybody's mentality. That 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 is the 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 largest. Well, you mentality. heard the trader, right? You heard the trader saying they you know in '91 they were waiting for the bombs to rain not rain down. They were hoping that uh, uh, Saddam Hussein would do something even more dramatic uh, and extend it. Uh, and you know, and when that failed quickly, we just we decided we'd stay in the area. We'll put it in a no-fly zone, and we'll make this thing a 30-year uh, investment of uh, blood and treasure. All right, guys, hang tight. We're going to take uh, our break. Eric, you are joining me the second hour. 
I, I would suppose I am. All right. Well, uh, I thank your wife for understanding that you're going to be talking loudly and saying a lot of blah, blah, blahs for the next hour. Guys, hang tight. We're going to be back uh, in 10 minutes. We're going to take our long break. Go get